Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a wonderful day. One of the things that I like to do and I have been doing since I started this investment stock market thing is to look at the investment companies and individuals that have a lot of money to invest in. Some of these people manage are asset manage managers, so they manage other people's money, and some of them actually invest their you know their own money. And the ones that I normally tend to look at are these people who manage at least the two billion, three billion, if not more. The reason I do that is because it kind of gives me an idea of what quality companies look like. Don't get me wrong; some of them their investment philosophies are not in line with what I like to do. But it kind of gives me an idea and then I can go away and do my own research and find out the companies that I like and then that basically fit into the my portfolio. So that's what we're going to do today. So we've done a couple of those videos before where we talked about Warren Buffett, where we talked about other um, investors. But today's video, I'm going to talk about a guy called Chris Horn. This guy is basically has got, I think, about eight or nine different companies in his portfolio, obviously. And that portfolio is mainly for um, basically just literally eight companies. So I want to go through some of the companies that he owns in his portfolio and basically see if the financials look good and if we can learn maybe one or two things about him. Um, so before I do that, though, I've made some change to the portfolio this week. I mean, some huge changes. As you can see, I've sold out of two companies completely. It's still 66, 67. It's been hovering around that for the whole week. So right, right now I've sold out two companies and I'm going to tell you why and what I've done with that money. And if you haven't joined the Patreon yet, please do so. If you would like to get hold of any new buys and sales, frequent um, portfolio updates, all the trackers are in there, the dividend calendar, the stock watch list, the ETF tracker, and then you've got access to the Discord where you can actually talk to other investors and myself as well. So for those who've already signed up, and now some of you have done it to join the page, um, the Discord and some of you haven't. So if you haven't done that yet, maybe look at joining us on the Discord. That would be really nice to have you guys. If you don't want to join it, to be honest with you, it's not that deep, okay? I will be sharing with you portfolio updates and things like that, inshallah, going forward. But yeah, it would be amazing if you can join us, right? Um, so this is the guy we're talking about today. Chris Horn is basically, I think he's worth about eight billion or so. Um, there we go. So seven point nine billion US dollars. That's basically his net worth currently. He, like I said, he owns eight stocks. And what tends to happen is, so one of the reasons why we know what these guys are investing in is the fact that the SEC in the US basically has this form called thirteen F. And for that reason, they have to disclose anything they bought the last, um, basically last quarter, if you like. Okay, but by the time we get that information, it could potentially be out of date because they might have sold it and so on. Okay, there is quite a long time. So the, basically, within the forty-eight days, um, they have to, forty-five days, they have to disclose that information um, to us. So in a way, basically, that's. We're very lucky to find out this information because it kind of gives you an idea. And there's a website called Dataroma, and I'll share that with you guys in a bit. But let's have a look at the companies this guy is investing in. Like we've already seen, is worth about basically eight billion dollars, and I believe the, this that money is actually his. He's not investing on behalf of other people. So we're just going to look at the usual things that if you've been in. With me for a while, you will know exactly what we're looking for. So we're looking for the market cap. We're looking for the moat, okay, price, dividend yield, the latest, the five-year growth rate, the payout ratio, dividend streak. So how long have they increased that dividend, okay, annual payout, the safety, the profit margin, return on equity, free cash flow, which is very important to me as an investor because that's how companies pay you dividend, buy back their own shares, reinvest that basically in the company and all of that stuff. Total return kind of gives us an idea of where the company has been in the last 10 years and then what we expect the company in terms of growth side of it for the next year and then the following five years. Then Morningstar valuation, which I think is quite good and then fair valued basically how what the price and the fair value price for that stock. Right, so let's have a look at the first company, and that is a company that I own in my portfolio, and that is S&P um, 
global this company is in the rating credit rating so on um, they work a lot they basically the, the the owners of a lot of indices a lot of credit ratings and so on is currently has a market cap of 116 billion dollars and it has wide economic moat, $360 per share, and it has a dividend yield of just 1%. The latest increase was about 6%, and then 15% growth in the last five years, which is quite nice if you, uh, if you think about it. Normally, we say about 6%, 7% is actually quite good, but 15% is absolutely brilliant. Payout ratio is right now only 30%. What this means is, right, the they basically spending 30 percent of their net income to pay us dividends okay which is quite nice they then that gives them a room to actually improve it if they want to in the next or increase it if they want to in the next basically couple of years they have been increasing this dividend for 49 years so by the end of next year this company will become what's called a dividend king Dividend King is a company that have increased that dividend for 50 years plus. Can you imagine 50 years of increasing the dividend? Not just paying it, they have increased it every single year. However small, even it might be just one penny, but they have increased it. That's the most important thing. So these companies have gone through recessions and all of these things, but they still had money, enough money to pay that dividend and increase it, which is very, very nice. Okay, And this is why I like this type of business, because you can sleep well at night knowing that you don't have to worry about it. And the fact that the payout ratio is very low, the dividend yields quite low, and they have increased that for 50 years is absolutely amazing, right? Because some companies will pay some ridiculous amount and then their payout ratio is like 80, 90%. Those are worry about, but this definitely not. Annual payout, we're looking at $3.60, safety 99%, profit margin of almost 30%, return on equity about 8%, 8.5%, free cash flow $2.5 billion, which is more than enough to cover that dividend and so on. Total return in the last 10 years, we're looking for basically looking at 24%. Next year, 15% growth, then growth estimate for the next five years, about 13%. Currently, 370 is the fair value, okay? And that's the first company he owns. The next one is the competitor. It's the direct competitor for this company. They're in the same kind of industry, if you like, but smaller, if you think about it. So Moody is slightly smaller. So it has a wide economic moat, but 500, sorry, 55 billion market cap, and it has a wide economic moat, $301 per share is where it is at right now. Dividends are almost the same, but the latest increase was actually 10% for this company and 13% for the last uh, five years, which is quite nice. 33% when it comes to payout ratio, and they have increased that dividend for 13 years. The payout ratio is almost the same, $3.08. Safety, 83%. Profit margin, 31%. Return on equity, 71%. Free cash flow, $1 billion, and total return of 21%. And next year, they expect it to grow about 10%, 20% this year, sorry. This is 2023. And then after that, they're expecting some sort of a decline in the growth of their basic of that business. So we'll see what that's about. So if you're interested in this kind of, kind of business, just go to Seeking Alpha and websites like that or Yahoo Finance and find out why there is a bit of a decline in the next five years. It's easy to find. $315 per share is where it should be. It's apparently is kind of fairly valued. The next one is Canadian National Railway. This is railroad company. Um, 78 billion market cap. It has wide economic mode, $116 per share. Dividend yield of 2%. Latest increase was about 7.8, let's call it 8%, 12% of a uh, five-year growth rate of 12%, pay a ratio of 38%, um, dividend streak of 26 years. So this means this company is a, if the company is part of the S&P 500 and increased their dividend 26 years or more, then that means they are what's called dividend aristocrat. So annually, they will pay you $2.36, safety is 97%. Um, percent which is really good profit margin of almost 30 percent return on equity 23 percent free cash flow 3.9 billion dollars total return 10 percent next year would expect 10 percent um then eight percent after that fairly valued right now about 109 dollars per share another railroad company okay so canadian pacific railroad 72 dollars 72 Two um, billion dollar market cap. It has wide economic mode, seventy seven dollars per share right now. Less than dividend yields, one less than one percent. 
they haven't increased it this year so for a while um five-year growth rate of 12 percent payout ratio 19 percent dividend streaks basically almost non-existent i think this is one of those companies one year will increase it the next year they will stop it for a couple of years and then they might increase it again there's some companies that do that they don't necessarily cut it but they don't increase it consistently so for that reason they don't get anything right so annually they'll pay you about 0 0.57 dollars safety is 76 dollars so this one it's actually not bad 61 and above is actually okay and profit margin 20 almost is seven percent return on equity about seven percent free cash flow 1.5 billion dollars and 13 percent um total return in the last 10 years which is absolutely fine next year they expected to earnings to grow about 15 percent and then nine percent after that it looks like about 14 percent overvalued according to Morningstar, the price should be about 68 dollars per share the next one is visa and this is a company that i own in my portfolio 460 billion dollar market cap is one of the biggest companies out there it has a wide economic mode 223 dollars per share dividend is, um, yield of just below one percent latest increase was 20 percent and the, the five-year growth rate is 18 percent the payout ratio very very low and then they have increased that dividend for 14 years payout um annual payout of one dollar and eighty cents safety 99 percent profit margin is absolutely amazing and return on equity is basically almost the same free cash flow was 17.74 billion dollars and total return in the last 10 years we're looking about 19 percent next year they expected to grow about 15 percent then 15 percent a year after every year after that it's fairly valued right now 229 dollars per share is where the price should be and now some of you are quite new to the channel so you might be thinking how is this Shreya compliant now when you think about this company they don't deal with the transactions and so on they are the basically the technology they create the technology behind those transactions they don't deal with the ins and outs of basically what these companies are buying and selling and so on they make sure the transaction takes place okay and they obviously get their cut based on those transactions that's how they make their money so the technology company not necessarily dealing with riba and so on if it was a riba subhanallah we would have basically not invested in this company will probably stay away from a hundred percent okay same goes for mastercard as well both companies have the similar sort of technology unlike um, paypal and other companies that collect basically um, riba from the things that riba basically being meaning interest the we don't deal with those kind of companies okay right so the next one is thermo official scientifics this company is in the um healthcare company 221 billion market cap it has wide economic mode this is one of the companies that i've wanted to add to my portfolio for a long time but every time i look at it, it seems a little bit overvalued but now it looks like it kind of coming back to fair value so it'll be interesting to look at 221 billion market cap it has wide economic mode 559 dollars per share dividend yield almost non-existent this you will not buy this company for the dividends I tr trust me although the latest increase and the five-year growth rate is about 15 percent payout ratio, ratio is almost non-existent okay but when you look at the five-year payout um they, they have increased only this for five years and one dollar and 20 cents is what you will get 72 percent in terms of safety 15 percent in terms of a profit margin and 16 percent return on equity 5.6 billion dollars of market cap total return in the last 10 years we're looking about 23 percent and 13 percent next year in terms of growth um in terms of earnings and then six percent after that and the fairly value right now 590 dollars per share is where it should be right now it's just trading below that so it seems maybe a good time to add this to a portfolio maybe i don't know i might need to do a little bit more research to find out because i do like the company and do like the basically what they do is more to do with the data side of things rather than um basically actually creating drugs and so on so i'm gonna do a little bit more research on the company inshallah in the next few days right just before we stop the video the other thing i want to share with you guys is the sharia compliant side of things all of these companies are great the only one i would be would definitely be worried about is this one here okay this one here and uh, canadian pacific railways road railway sorry has to almost a 25 percent interest bearing debt that could easily change okay that could easily change so just be careful if you are looking in this company you you probably be better off with the canadian national railway or union union pacific is almost the same as well 
but I would not be adding a company going forward. I will not be adding companies to my portfolio that have interest bearing debt or securities that are above, so let's say, 20. I'm going to make that decision going forward. And I'm currently making some change. And like I said at the beginning, I've made some huge change to the portfolio. I will be sharing that on the Discord tomorrow, inshallah, if the family give me space because I know, you know, the family said we'll go out and stuff, do stuff tomorrow. So if I get time, inshallah, I will be adding that. And then possibly next week or so, I will be sharing with you some of the um, changes that I've made. I've got a few more videos that I've got planned for us in terms of super investors, in terms of talking about certain individuals and then portfolio updates and there's a lot more to come in the next couple of days i've got actually seven or eight different videos that i've planned in the last 24 hours so what i would like you guys to do is give this video a like subscribe to the channel let me know if you have any questions you know the more people like the videos and so on the content the more inshallah we can grow this community in the end of the day what i want to achieve is to help everyone out there inshallah invest in the stock market i don't know everything i'm still learning i make mistakes just like everybody else but i would really appreciate if we can help each other inshallah without judging each, each other without questioning maybe question each other is fine but without basically being judgmental if we can help each other basically because i've got i've had a conversation with a friend basically a couple of days ago and i'm going to share with you guys that um, conversation in the next video where i talk by the way the next video will be inshallah I will go through some of your questions and I'll answer them inshallah and I will talk about that situation but it would be really great if we could not judge each other but at least help each other to grow this community and inshallah in the long run to achieve whatever you want to achieve whether it's a financial freedom whether you want to spend time with your family or just have extra income whatever it is inshallah may Allah make it easy for you and make it easy for all of us I'm kind of losing my voice have a wonderful day assalamu alaikum